Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. So uh, we got a little project again here today that I uh, thought you guys might enjoy watching uh, do. So what we've got is a shaft, uh, and it's uh, this is a, the original one. This comes out of a uh, oscillating spindle sander, uh, an old antique one made early 1900s, and uh, this is. Uh, the original one that's in there, it's actually been uh, pretty heavily modified over the years uh, as they have made some changes to it. And we're basically going to do a total redesign uh, on the shaft uh, to kind of make it work with a little bit more modern uh, tooling uh, that you can get for these now. So let me kind of zoom you guys in here and uh, show you what's going on, what the plan is, and uh, we'll get started. So again, this is the original shaft here, and uh, you got a couple of uh, keyed pieces down here. So there's a, a gear, uh, a little worm gear that fits on here. I'm not sure if that's the if it's this way or the other way. Uh, it really doesn't matter for what I'm doing with it, but that gear fits on here. And uh, this is what spins it, and uh, basically this thing oscillates up and down uh, on this on this gear right here. Uh, so this shaft is turning and uh, as it's turning it's oscillating up and down. Uh, there's a bearing that fits uh, right here. I've got the bearing. And then down here on the bottom is another little piece and this is a, uh, I think engages into, there, it's a little tight, but I think this, and I think that's upside down. I'm not 100% sure there either, but I, this is the part that there's a yoke that basically that fits on here I think and uh, adjust this up and down so uh, or maybe that's here I'm not exactly sure how all this works but this is how it kind of goes together there's a little uh, I'm gonna have to make a little uh, collar here that fits up underneath the bottom of that bearing to kind of hold it in place uh, no big deal there but you know I've got these pieces for test fitting is kind of the uh, main reason I got them but what we want to do is is this is the real this is the end that's this doing the work and so there is a uh, basically a sanding sleeve that comes down over this shaft and you tighten it up on the top and it's just a, a round disc and this oscillates up and down. And they had a whole lot of different size uh, spindles that, that fit on these things and I believe on these early ones in order to change out this spindle up here you had to change out everything. Now in more modern spindle sanders what they have is they have uh, a piece like this and this is actually one off of a more modern one. Uh, and if you notice here we kind of have a, a tapered piece, a threaded uh, piece in the bottom here and they would make these uh, these uh, spindle or yeah these uh, sanding spindles different diameters up here at the top for different size uh, sanding sleeves. So what we want to do or what the plan is is that we're going to basically make a new um, bottom piece down here uh, that will be very similar to the one we have here. Uh, we're going to turn it out of some hex material, and uh, but the shaft won't be here. And then we're going to come in here and um, bore this taper, put that tap in there. Well, this piece can then screw in here, and they can take this in and out uh, to use different size sanding sleeves. So. Basically all we're making is from here down and again we've made a few modifications and this piece has already been pretty heavily modified. Uh, these diameters on here I don't think are the original diameters. Um, I think that they've turned these down and bored out. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with this. It's got some kind of funky measurements on here but we're going to make it work with what we have. So anyway I've got a drawing here. Uh, that we've drawn up that basically has what I want to do and uh, been going back and forth with email with Scott Andrew who I'm working with on this project. This is actually from one of his machines and I think we've got all our dimensions and everything right and uh, here's a piece of uh, hex material uh, that we're going to use to turn this out of and again the reason we're turning this out of hex is uh, up here at the top where this is going to screw in we want to be able to put a wrench on that because we need to be able to uh, tighten these two pieces together. So there needs to be, be able to put a wrench on the bottom piece and a wrench on the top piece to be able to screw them and unscrew them. So uh, we're going to turn this out of hex. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, again, I've got the drawings to work, excuse me, to work off of. Got the hiccups. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. We'll put this up, set this up in the lathe and get going. We're going to start by uh, 
facing the bottom and putting a uh, center hole in here. And uh, so we'll just go ahead and fire up the lathe, get that going. So we've got this uh, piece of stock in here now and uh, thin it out. Uh, we need to go about 11 inches deep. I've already put a mark in here of 11 inches just to measure that with a rule and uh, hit it with my cutter on the lathe just to kind of know where I need to stop. It's actually a little under 11 inches because I know I can go in there at the end and face that off and get it exactly right. We need to turn this uh, first diameter down to one inch. 26 thousandths and uh, we're ready to go so uh, let's get it done. Let's see where we are now. We're at about 134, or excuse me, 34 thousandths over an inch. Still got about two thousandths taper in there. Let's see where we're at now. All right, so that is right on the money on that measurement, and that one is about a thousandth and a over, a thousandth and a half over. So we're going to leave that like it is right now, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this uh, step down below it and. Uh, and then we'll come back in here and test fit the piece. We're probably going to have to do a little polishing to get this just right. And uh, we've got a little warmth in there too. That might shrink down just a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it, at least get the next step in here, just so that we can get that uh, gear up on there because this diameter down here may be a little bit too big. I don't know. So uh, you know, we're just going to turn that down and make it easier to get on there. I'm going to put a witness mark in here at about four and a half inches, or not about, but at four and a half inches. That's good right there. This diameter is going to be 786 thousandths. We'll just take about a hundred thousand from this first pass.
So after a little bit of polishing here, um, we've got a real nice slip fit with this on here, which is what we want. It's going to be, this will actually slide up and down. It won't be turning on the shaft, but it will be sliding up and down on that key. So we need to have a good clearance, and uh, that is just fitting like a glove. So uh, I'm real happy with that. So now we'll get on down here on the bottom end and uh, finish uh, turning it down here. So the next diameter we need to do here, it needs to be 0.786 right here. And this is where bearing is going to come up. It'll seat up against the shoulder. And it's only going to be about 600 thousandths. Then we're going to go down to a smaller diameter again. So we're going to go ahead and turn that on there and uh, get it where that bearing will fit right up on. And we need to take off about 150 thousandths. I'm about a uh, half thousandth over my mark, so I think I'm just going to hit that with some memory cloth and polish out that last little bit. Right on the money. 786. All right, we're getting close here. Uh, this bottom section here gets turned down to uh, 0.7495, so half a thousandth under three quarter. And uh, I've got a witness mark here that will leave that 600 thousandths in here, so we can turn down there. So I've got a little over 30 thousandths. Uh, to take off of this. close again. I think I'm just going to polish off uh, the shaft here and uh, test fit it. So after a little polishing again, this piece fits up on here very nicely. Um, that's just perfect. And I'm not sure if this one slides up and down on here or if it say stationary, um, but regardless, I think it actually slides a little bit, but we got it on there where it will slide, and uh, we're good to go. So uh, before I take this out, I want to come in here and just uh, touch the bottom of this, uh, put a little bit of relief on these corners so they're not so sharp, and then we'll be ready to take this out and uh, cut her off, and we can start working on the other end. So uh, I have pulled the uh, piece out of the lathe now, and what I want to do is when we turn it around the other way, we're gonna, one of the operations is going to be boring uh, 
the hole to match the taper. And this is the, the arbor that's going to be going down in there. And this is a, a slight taper. When I measured it with the calipers and used some trigonometry to help figure out the angle, it came out to a two degree angle on each side. So um, uh, I came over here to the lathe and I, I set my compound to two degrees, but I wanted to verify uh, that, that it was indeed the right angle. And it really doesn't matter what the angle is. What's important is, is that I've got the angle perfectly matching that. So I've come in here now and I've set up the arbor that will screw down in there. I have it between centers in the lathe. And what I have done is I have just bumped around uh, the, the uh, uh, compound here to get the angle just right. So if you look, I'm going to just move the whole carriage. You can tell, you know, there's, there's a taper on there. So as I move the whole carriage, there's a taper on there. That's moving it parallel. I've got it on zero now. Now I'm going to crank out the uh, the compound and as you can see I've got it really 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 close uh, I, I can pick up you know maybe a tenth of a thousandth or something on there but it is hardly moving off of that uh, zero so I'm, I'm happy with this like I said I've just kind of bumped it around and if you read the uh, the readout on the uh, compound itself it's saying it's just a little over one degree and so I don't know if, if this is absolutely perfect or whether you know it's off by three quarters of a degree uh, it's very likely that this is not perfect but again what is important is I have this compound now set up perfectly to match that uh, that angle the next uh, thing I need to worry about here is is work holding for this uh, piece that I've got. And my original plan was, was I can put the four jaw chuck uh, on the lathe and uh, dial it in and get it running perfectly true uh, using the four jaw chuck. But then I got to thinking, hey, I've got the collet chuck and uh, this diameter that I'm down here is just a tad over an inch. And as it turns out, the only collet that I have for this uh, collet chuck is a one inch collet. Uh, so I put it on and checked it out and sure enough, you know, this is just going to be perfect. So we're just going to use the collet chuck and uh, that'll have this part, you know, running dead nuts on. Uh, so I'm tickled with that. You know, I picked this collet chuck up uh, back last, uh, late last fall and it's kind of got oddball size collets. These are 22J collets and um, they're expensive and I just haven't found very many of them yet in a price range that I was willing to, to pay for and I'm sure as I do more projects and I have a need for different size collets I'll be adding to those sizes but right now the only one I have is a is a one inch for this and but for this job that's going to be perfect so uh, that's all uh, chucked up I'm probably going to put the indicator on here just to make sure it's running true but uh, it, it should be just really right on so uh, uh, we'll go ahead and start working on this end. Next step here, we want to uh, go ahead and face the top of this out, get it uh, smoothed up. And also we want this uh, head to be a half inch thick. So uh, we'll true it up first, put the calipers on there, measure it, and we'll get that uh, uh, turned down to half inch. <laughs> thousandths over. I'm going to put my little mag mount uh, indicator over here on the side uh, of the carriage to measure off of and uh, we'll probably do about 45 thousandths and then go 90. I'm going to put my little mag mount uh, indicator over here on the side uh, of the carriage to measure off of and uh, we'll probably do about 45 thousandths and then go 90.
Next thing I want to do here is just kind of knock these corners off like I did on the back side. So I've got a uh, cutter in here. It's actually a threading tool. It's not quite, I got the angle where it's not quite 60 degrees. I don't know what it is, but it's just something to kind of round these over. And we're just going to feed this in basically until uh, it's even with the, the low spot in the flat. And that'll just relieve that corner and make it not where it's not quite as sharp and a little bit uh, just easier to handle in the hand. Go ahead and center drill this. So now we're going to drill this. I need to go about two and a quarter inches deep. We got a, a 2764 drill bit in here because the bottom of that hole is going to be tapped uh, half inch 13. So uh, and then I measure my depth uh, where I've got a little bit extra clearance in the bottom. Uh, like I said, we're going to go about two and a quarter inches deep and uh, we're ready to go. I uh, <clears throat> went off camera there for a couple of minutes and kind of double checked my setup and uh, made sure everything's like it needs to be. And I want to kind of show you guys how we got this set up here. So again, uh, the angle is already set on the compound. And again, we indicated that in on the original piece to get it to match. So um, I've got this now set and I'm, I'm gonna move that in. We're basically, when I, go to the end of my travel, that's my proper depth. Uh, so basically that's my stop, is basically as far as this uh, uh, cross slide will actually uh, travel in. And because I need to be able to get in there and make measurements and stuff, I've got to stop here on the carriage uh, that stops me in the right place again, where when this gets in the bottom, it's in the right place. So. Uh, I've already made a pass or two in here, and what I'm gonna be measuring is this outside diameter, and I have measured the, uh, the piece that's gonna fit up in there. So uh, the diameter, the large diameter on this is about 685,000. So we're gonna get up, you know, probably within about uh, 15, 20 thousandths of that, and uh, just coming in here and measuring this, and right now I've got about 150 thousandths more to take out. And when we get close, we will uh, come in here again, tap the bottom, and we'll start fitting this to get to the right depth uh, in the piece itself. So anyway, we got everything set up. Hopefully you can see how that's set up. And uh, we're gonna continue uh, boring this out uh, to the right size. about 20 thousandths of our final size so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we'll tap the bottom of that hole and do a test fit and kind of sneak up on that final fit so uh, I'll set up for the tapping. I've got a half inch tap in here uh, set up and uh, of course tap wrench here and then I've got a tap follower behind it uh, to keep it all lined up. This is just a little spring-loaded point uh, that I will adjust in as we tap in. And I'm using a uh, just regular uh, taper tap right now, hand tap, and uh, we'll go to the bottom and uh, then we're gonna blow it all out and we'll come back in with a bottoming tap and uh, tap all the way, get the threads good all the way to the bottom. But for this first pass, we'll just use the uh, taper tap. So 
So now we've got a bottoming tap here, and of course you can see the difference is these the threads will go all the way to the very bottom. And one, now that the, the thread has started, uh, that should just go right in. And um, we've already got a taper thread cut down to the bottom, but this will finish that out. And that feels like bottom right there. All right, let's do a test fit here. We should be getting close. I've actually gone in here and taken a little bit more out off camera. And all right, we are getting down really close here you know there may be a little less than a quarter of an inch in there so i'm going to take a, just a few more thousandths off of that bore and uh, we'll check this fit one more time So we've got the turning done, and uh, I'm pleased with the fin fit and finish, all that. You can see the original shaft back here. Um, one thing I am a little bit concerned with, and uh, this is something that Scott and I had gone back and forth with on his measurements, and I'm trusting him on his measurements. He wanted this to be up a little bit higher, but you know that's a good bit higher. I'm hoping that that's not gonna uh, cause a problem, uh, so. Anyway, we hopefully we won't have to make any modifications to the plan. But uh, before I before I continue with this project, I want to get with Scott and make sure that's not going to be an issue. I'm uh, again, I'm a little bit concerned because I mean that's the bottom of the old one. The, the top of this uh, piece here is about an inch higher than the top of the old one. Uh, and he said there was room that we could uh, bring it up, but I want to make sure that uh, we're going to be good with that. So uh, <clears throat> what's next on this? Well, number one, this is all for today. Uh, but once we uh, get back, we got, or once I get confirmed that everything's right, uh, we got to put some keyways in here. I've got the bearing. We'll go ahead and put the bearing on. I've already test fit that, and it just it fits on there. You, you, kinda, you can push it on by hand, uh, but it's a tight fit, and uh, that's what Scott wanted on that. Uh, there is a little collar that I'm going to have to machine that kind of fits up under here that's pinned in place that holds that bearing and keeps it from coming down. And of course, again, the keyways uh, we got to mill in here. And uh, we've also got to do a little bit of work on the, uh, the, the, the piece on the bottom and the, uh, the, the worm uh, broaching them out. Uh, the, the ones that we have actually, uh, at one sometime or another, these original parts were bored out a little bit oversized and for whatever reason they put metric uh, keyways in there and uh, we're going to just take them out a little bit larger put I think quarter inch keys in here which is real close to what we got and uh, get it back to something that's a little bit easier for us to work with over here uh, so anyway that's kind of the plan there and uh, we'll go from there so that'll be a wrap. Um, that's going to be all for today, all the time I have today. And plus, I want to get these measurements checked out before we uh, put any more time and effort into this to make sure we don't have to modify it. If this is a problem, I've actually got enough material uh, that I can make another one of these and shorten this up a little bit. So I just need to confer with Scott and make sure uh, that that's going to work all right. And uh, hopefully, everything's fine like it is. Uh, but we'll go from there, and uh, next time, like I said, we'll uh, hopefully, or in a future video, we will finish up the, uh, the rest of the mill work that's mostly that's left on this, uh, again, in another episode. So thank you guys for watching. As always, thank you to my many subscribers. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. And uh, when you do, of course, you'll get a little email when new videos are, are uh, submitted. Uh, 
and uh, you can kind of keep track of what we got going on in the shop out here. Always something interesting going on, and hopefully you guys enjoy uh, watching working in the shop. So again, thanks a lot. We'll see you later.